Just minutes ago, a man was pulled out of the rubble of a collapsed home in Beloit after it exploded. This is just one of the areas in Grant County that was severely damaged by last month's flooding. An attempted homicide in a Madison home leaves a woman hospitalized and a man now in custody. Just within the last hour, we learned who the suspect is in the murder of the five-year-old boy. Sun Prairie Police say that suspect is 23-year-old Dakota Black. If someone does fall through the ice, the Lake Rescue Team uses this Argo to get to them wearing these flotation suits. It may look like someone's bedroom, but it's actually a business. For a fee, you can get inside and snuggle up with someone. An 18-year-old freshman was jogging along this bridge when she was attacked by a group of five men. More than 30 reports of armed and strong robberies downtown this year leave UW-Madison students and their parents concerned. Until this year at Black Earth Elementary, anyone could just walk right into the school. But now... Everyone needs to be screened through a brand new security system before being let in. Well, mosquitoes have really just made their entrance over the past week, so people are rushing out to the stores to buy stuff like this. It's streets like these that some of us walk daily, where children could be selling themselves for basic necessities. I would like sleep with them for a place to stay. Whenever they wanted it, I pretty much provided. A woman we'll call Jane because she didn't want to be identified says she started trading sex for a place to stay and food to eat when she was just 10 years old. I went down to State Street. And the only way to not see this is to not look. Sexually abused by a neighbor, bullied at school and ignored by her parents, Jane ran away from home. I really didn't want to go home, so I just did what I felt like I had to do to stay away from that. National statistics show 30% of kids who run away will be trafficked within 48 hours. Joanne Gruberhagen with Dane County's Human Trafficking Awareness Coalition, Slave Free Madison, works with survivors. Most of them say, I can't stay here anymore. It's absolutely intolerable. I've got to go, and where will I go? Well, she goes to the streets. Other runaways, we would stay in like the basement of like apartments. Numerous partners most nights of the week, but Jane said she finally felt accepted. I just really didn't feel like I belonged anywhere and the people downtown at least made me feel like I was acceptable and they just accepted me the way that I was. This continued for years. When she was 16, Jane responded to an ad for modeling which turned out to be another avenue of trafficking. Essentially, you know, them asking for me to sleep with them. She then responded to another ad for what seemed more legitimate, a magazine soliciting job in Minnesota. I just sort of wanted to like get out of Madison. I thought that maybe that would help me start over my life. But she didn't even make it past Chicago, swept up by a pimp right when she stepped off the train. I worked the street in Chicago for like a little while. Now prostituting herself with several partners every night on hard drugs just to get through it and answering to a pimp that would beat her if she didn't listen. She realized it gone too far. I just didn't want to go home. But it's something that became a lifestyle for Jane, taking part in some sort of sexual exploitation for about 17 years of her life. They want out, but you know, without any help, where do they go? Bad relationships and many bad friendships and many bad, you know, things. And I don't know how to say no to people. At 29 years old, Jane is just now coming to terms with her life of trafficking. When you stop doing this sort of stuff, then it's it's like, and, and then what? Now with a GED, two boys, and her first legitimate job. Don't start. It's not. It's not worth it. But Jane is just one of more than 200 trafficking victims in Wisconsin, according to Slave Free Madison, and those are just the ones recorded. Nobody reports it because nobody knows what it looks like and nobody wants to know it's there. It's a hidden crime with a lack of understanding, statistics, and convictions. Only 24 cases in Dane County since 2009, four prosecuted under federal law, and two under state law. Judges don't understand the issue. 
Juries don't understand the issue. Nobody did anything, really. But with recent statewide action and response, Joanne and other members of anti-trafficking organizations are hopeful. It won't take 30 years, perhaps, for us to come to recognize that this is a problem here locally and to do something about it. The hardest thing for victims to do is to come forward and ask for help. But as shown by Jane's story, it's the best thing you can do. In downtown Madison, Brittany McDonald, NBC 15. It may look like someone's bedroom, but it's actually a business. For a fee, you can get inside and snuggle up with someone. A service people working here say is all about unconditional love. There's this whole part of us that gets neglected a lot of the time. In a typical setting above a downtown Madison bar is the snuggle house. Inside, several bedrooms laid out for therapeutic cuddle sessions. We have beds, we have couches. Stress levels go down. You feel better. You know, anxiety in a lot of people just kind of dissipates. Clients pay for an hour of service that isn't restricted to hitting the sheets. If you want to curl up and lay down and just some good old fashioned snuggling, you can do that. If you want to sit and talk, you know, if you want to cry on my shoulder, I'm totally cool with that. Lonnie Johnson's one of five employees who says the snuggle house provides a controlled environment for what he says should be a way of life. I would love to see everybody do this in general, you know, as a way of living. The legitimacy of a business, you know, can really, it sets people at ease. They've reached out to the VA, nursing homes and others who may be neglected of affection. A safe place people can go to really be consoled and comforted and like feel that warmth of human love that's that doesn't have any undertones. And kind of creep me out a little bit. But not everyone's convinced. You kind of wonder what they're up to in there. The snuggle house is in the final stages of inspections before opening, but already with nearly 100 appointments made. The city of Madison is concerned the business has a potential of prostitution, but the Snuggle House ensures their services are strictly non-sexual. It's very much like a doctor's office. Security-wise, protocol-wise, we are covered, and we are not negotiating in any way any of those situations. Well, Lee, if a student acts out, teachers can legally physically restrain a child or seclude them in a separate room. But until new legislation, they didn't have to tell anyone how often or for how long. Yeah, I would get restrained and then thrown in the room. Donovan Richard says he was secluded in a room in the Middleton Cross Plains School numerous times, beginning in kindergarten, sometimes for hours at a time. I would just erratically get more upset from that point. Donovan, now 19 years old, was diagnosed with bipolar disorder at age four. School was really challenging. It was a, an anxiety-producing environment. His mother, Paula Beagie, says she didn't even know these measures were being taken until one day in second grade, Donovan had a psychotic break. It was unclear if he was going to recover. It was kind of appalling that there were no guidelines. There were no uh, regulations dictating how it could be used in school, and kids are getting hurt. Um, staff are getting hurt. Paula decided to take action and start from within. She was hired on the Middleton Cross Plains School District in 2001 as their parent liaison and student intervention support. Hoping for better response from teachers and better results for Donovan, she developed a behavioral implementation plan with the district. Everyone around him was a little more um, equipped to um, help him through that so they didn't get to the escalated state. In 2009, she wanted to take her efforts statewide now working for Wisconsin Family Ties. But she knew real change would come from legislation. Just last year, Paula and Donovan were there when Governor Walker signed Act 125 into law, requiring schools to record every use of seclusion and restraint and notify parents. I think the greatest challenges facing our youth going forward right now that we're seeing currently are our mental health needs, and, and more specifically, unmet mental health needs. Now at Middleton Cross Plains Schools, the director of student services says the use of seclusion and restraint has decreased by nearly 50 percent. It increases the questions, it increases the the accountability, the documentation, everything, and I think all that's better for our kids. Middleton Cross Plains is also now providing training in mental health services to their staff. 
Madison School District implemented a mental health task force just over this past year. Nearly two dozen horses that were kept in unlivable conditions in Kenosha County have been nursed back to health and are ready for adoption. Flooding has been an issue in surrounding areas for weeks now for some it's just beginning. Well, with all the flooding, officials are warning residents to be on the lookout for scam artists who are going door to door. In Milwaukee, police have arrested three people accused of hiding a corpse in an apartment. Police identified the body of 62-year-old Glenn Willis found Friday. That's come from the rain. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful rainbow. I saw the most beautiful rainbow I've ever seen yesterday. You know the worst part? Bugs. They're in my apartment. They're okay. Right. Negative like Nancy. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back with sports. Stay with us. Investigators are searching a home in Evansville tonight where they think a missing teen may have died. NBC 15's Madeline Anderson joins us now from the scene with the latest. Two drivers in separate incidents are arrested on tentative charges of drunken driving. For both, it would be their sixth OWI. Around the nation now, after being closed yesterday, Los Angeles International Airport is back open. Authorities continue to investigate the shooting. A TSA agent was killed and a half dozen others hurt. But police say the suspect had enough rounds to shoot far more people than he did. Brian Moore has a story from Washington. Halloween may be over, but digging through all the candy is just beginning. If you're feeling a little sugared out, there's a way to get that extra candy off your hands. While the Badgers were in Iowa battling it out on the football field, most of us were here in Wisconsin watching the game in the warmth of our homes, and that's needed in these chilly conditions. We'll send it over now to NBC 15's meteorologist Brian Dukes for a look at the weather. Brian. Good evening, I'm Brittany McDonald. It's the Halloween party that's known around the country. Freak Fest on State Street is going on right now. Now, NBC 15's Madeline Anderson was downtown tonight and spoke to law enforcement about tonight's efforts to keep everyone safe. A 20-year-old Sussex man is now behind bars after police found a homemade bomb in his apartment. A proposal raising the speed limit on Wisconsin's interstates to 70 miles per hour continues to race through the legislature. Milwaukee-based Garden Fresh Foods Incorporated is recalling 50 more tons of chicken and ham products over concerns of possible listeria contamination.